Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya Al-Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah Today I'm going to continue to tell us How we're going to achieve physical energy and wellness huh? In the holy state way of life Remember our framework for being achievers in life For you all The young people of Islam The transforming generation Always remember this little framework and every day think about it and how you can contribute it, contribute to develop yourself, develop the Ummah and develop this world in a holistic manner and be the transforming generation and be achievers in life to make yourself good, to help others to be good, to make this world good. By understanding our purpose in life and meaning in life as a Caliph of Allah, understanding that we live in the now, in the presence and we understand the presence of the Creator and how we are going to link ourselves with Allah. I've spoken in very big detail about positive Islamic psychology. Now we are discussing about physical wellness, how physiology is affecting our total spiritual and emotional health. And then later on we'll talk about how to be productive human being, how to have uh, interpersonal skills of persuasion, and then the gift of giving. And finally, having achieved love in this world, having achieved love for Allah, for ourselves, our family, and all of society and then we become total achievers in life so about this physical energy yeah i've spoken to you just before about this whole idea of the junk food civilization all kind of processed food all kind of junk food that you see today all kind of fast food that is going to destroy the health of the majority of human beings in this life that means for example if we take the japanese people they were very healthy people but now when they take this junk food culture, they are also dying, having all kinds of problems and all, all kinds of disease. Uh, they have the same problem, even in China. They have a very good Chinese cooking system, which is very natural, but now when they go into this junk food, fast food, processed food culture, they are also destroying themselves. So it's, it's a worldwide global phenomena that we Muslims must be able to then try to bring the ummah to go back to the natural way of life. So what is the natural way of life? There are many, many tips that, inshallah, uh, I can give you, but let's start with these simple tips of changing yourself and changing your diet. For example, if you're obese, all right, how are you going to reduce weight? Or you're having uh, diabetics. How actually, actually you can remove your diabetics, type 2 diabetics, uh, from affecting you? By just changing your lifestyle. So our lifestyle, we call it the GF bombs lifestyle. Eh? The GF bomb lifestyle. What is this GF bomb lifestyle? You see, naturally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. What are we supposed to eat? Alright? From those primordial days, the days which Allah ordained upon us, when even we are living in stone age, what, what is our diet? Is it this modern diet of fast food, junk food, sugar, sugar lead? Or what is it that we eat every day? Uh, say 200,000 years ago. Alright? And we look at all their diet, we look at the tools as found during the Stone Age or the early Bronze Age uh, or uh, the early Iron Age and so on. You can see that the diet of human beings is basically based on this. What, is, what are these? First with greens. We always ravage and find herbs, vegetables, roots. So we are actually based on greens. That's why our teeth, we do not have all right, huge incisors, huh? huge one, fangs to, to claw an animal, to claw, to claw meat. But we have more of molars. All right? So our molar system is more to grind. So to grind what? To grind vegetables, to grind grains, uh, to grind roots. So everything that we have, the nutrient that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed upon us, is available from the greens that you can find throughout the world. Every, every temperature zone have different kind of greens, but today we can have many, many greens for many parts of the world, which Alhamdulillah is very good. We can have lettuce, for example, and we even can plant it in the tropics uh, by using greenhouse technique, hy uh, hydrophonics, and so many, many things that you can do using solar energy, temperature control. There's so many technology. Actually, technology is very, very good if we can use it for the purpose of 
enhancing our health. So start your diet with taking green. So every day your, your diet start with eating uh, potato chips and french fries, then you're asking for trouble. What green did you have today? All right. What kind of vegetables that you eat today? There's so many, the whole range, the whole spectrum of the rainbow range, yeah? the rainbow range of all rainbow range. You have this, the whole rainbow range of greens. We call it greens because we just say green, but we have uh, red tomato, we have uh, blue uh, brinjals and so on. So many colors of all the various, because these are antioxidants that will then bring about uh, the whole host of your digestive system, your microbiome within your guts, it thrives on all these things based on the fibers, the celluloids, the minerals, the vitamins, all laden in the green. So we start with the green. All right? So have a very heavy base of our life on green. Then we also have fruits. So there are so many kinds of fruits. Again, the whole spectrum of colors of fruits from all right, apples, pears, to grapes, to berries, to whatever that we have, okay? So we take this. Next, if we have this, 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 we have the greens, we have the fruits, we have the legumes, actually it is already quite balanced diet already. So we take beans, so what kind of beans? We have all kind of beans. And the beans can be processed, for example, in the South Asia, we process soya bean into tempeh. It's a fermented, and it's better than meat. 10 times better in terms of protein content, 100 times better than beef. And it is free from chemicals, free from many, many of these nonsense, uh, antibiotics and so on that you find in modern beef. All right? And it is laden with omega-3 and it's very healthy. So you have beans. Uh, for example, from, from soya bean, you can have tempeh, you can have tofu, you can have uh, from the beans dal, you can have all the various Indian dishes of dal based. Uh, you have all kind of other beans, broad beans, uh, peas and so on. So these are protein based. So if we have legumes, beans, fruits, it's actually quite balanced. But we want flavoring, okay? And this flavoring has a lot of antioxidant and anti-cancer property. For example, onions, whether it's the big onions, whether it is the uh, various colored onions, okay? Uh, we have garlic, all these are onion family. We can take that and we can have the joy, the flavoring. Uh, and it is so wonderful. You can eat it fresh, you can eat it cooked with curry or with whatever it is. Then we have mushrooms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us thousands of species of mushroom. 99% of them are toxic. Maybe 1% of the mushroom are edible. So this 1% have the whole spectrum of a uh, wonderful, wonderful nutrient because it absorbed from the wood, it absorbed from the dead leaves and so on. All the nutrients from this earth. Okay, so we have this mushrooms like maitake, shintake, enoki, and all of them have different, different oyster mushrooms, have the different, different flavoring, different taste, different nutrients that we can eat without worry of toxicity and we can get good health. It has a lot of antioxidant, a lot of anti-cancer properties. So if you are having cancer, it is best to have more of mushroom food, for example, like shetaike and maitaike. All right, then we talk about berries. These are antioxidant type of berries, huh? whether it's blueberries, cranberries, uh, even for example, we can have this uh, promogonate. All right, we can, all these are antioxidant. We can eat as it is or make it into juices. And last but not least is we have spices. This is the spice of life. We talk about spices, all the curries, huh? whether it's cucumin, whether it is uh, the various types of many, many spices that you see in the spice shop. And they're mixed into curry powder or cucumin powder or whatever curry uh, spices combination. There are hundreds of spices combination. That is wonderful. And you can use it as a cooking material to cook all these things. And herbs, especially in the tropical, we have hundreds of species of herbs that have anti-cancer property, anti-diabetic property, anti so many of these diseases that you have, we're just consuming those herbs. And some of them you can make into tea, infusion, and so many things. So you can have a wonderful, healthy, wealthy life by just having this. But here you see I'm not talking about, then where is my meat? Where is my fish? Where is my chicken? You say, no, I can't live without meat, all right? 
Yes, you can. So you can have this GF bomb to be 90% of your diet. So this GF bomb will become 90%. 90%. And then the 10%, we just take what whether we want. Whether, uh, whether it's meat, whether it's fish, whether it's eggs, uh, etc. So we can chicken, especially chicken, meat, fish, eggs, etc. So the 10% you can still go into the animal protein. 90% is all natural, vegetable, fruits and herbs. 10% is this chicken. But our lifestyle is the other way around. For example, you go to a restaurant, what do you have? chunk and chunk of chicken or meat made into burgers or patties or just uh, you go to the, all this chicken restaurant what you have fried in deep fried with oil that is so toxic and you're eating that what you get you get body inflammation when your body is inflamed you get stress when you get stress you get all the inflammation of the body the joints arthritis you get brain your brain also gets inflammated, you cannot think well. And all those whole symptoms that we have by eating too much protein. And not only that, because when you take a lot of this, for example, meat and so on, you are burdening this earth with millions and millions of cows, goats and lambs and so on, which is emitting tremendous amount of CO2, which is changing the climate. Don't, don't think that the, the animals are not contributing to the change of the climate. The animals are contributing, not only the cars, the taxis, the lorries, but the animals because we are putting a mono diet based on animal protein. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of our, even our teeth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not designed us to eat, to become meat eating only. We can have all these things plus milk, dairy, because some culture they have dairy, for example like the Zulus and so on, they are basically uh, even the Indians, they, they take a lot of dairy products, milk uh, and milk byproduct like yogurt and so on. So all these things are good, good products that if we can include in our life, inshallah, I can give you even give the formula. For example, you have type 2 diabetics. Uh, you have a very high reading of your blood sugar, uh, 22, 28, 30, it's shooting up to the sky. How is it to bring down to 10 and below? It's quite easy. All right. Maybe if you fast, the Islamic way of fasting, and when you break fast, just break up with this little thing. G, F, and B. Onions, mushroom, mushroom, eh? green fruits, beans, onion, mushrooms, berries, and spices and herbs. So you make, you have so many recipe books, you just try to go around, forget about all these things. Do it for one week. You see what happens. You only, not only you lose weight, your blood sugar will go back to normal. And you restrict your calorie intake. What, what are calorie intake you got to restrict? First and foremost, you got to cut off. You got to cut off. What you got to cut off? One is sugar and sugary food. Cakes, uh, soft drinks, whatever. Uh, all the sugar and sugary. This is the first thing you must cut off. Secondly, you cut off all the junk food. Junk food, all those crispies, all those uh, no in the cans coming, all kind of crisps, all of, uh, all those nonsense. Cut out junk food. All right. Number three, reduce your calorie intake. Huh? Just cut down your food because if you eat all these things, for example, you make some legume and vegetable soup, you can't go hungry because it takes about seven hours to process in your guts. And your guts bacteria, the, uh, your biome in your guts also have all the time to actually munch on it. All the, you have more than two kilo worth of bacteria in your guts. This bacteria eats all those things and breaks down so nicely and neatly that all parts of your body, all the mineral, all the vitamin, all the nutrients, even the carbohydrate that is taken off very slowly, there's no spike in your blood sugar level, and inshallah, you would then be free from diabetics. And it's as easy as that. I can give you a, say, a 30 days challenge. You try. 
Maybe if you are on insulin, you can even get rid of the insulin. But remember, when you do all these things, you must make sure you test, get a physician to help you out. If the physician doesn't know this natural method of how to go about with it, buy some books on it, and then you follow. Very, very simple. And I can tell you, it is so fantastic. You can see the result within two or three days. Start fasting, eat small quantity, make sure you're not hungry, or you can have intermittent. Every four hours, you eat a small portion, soup, or curry, or whatever it is, but cut down on junk food, fast food, and cut out on sugar, and the other things. That means you cut down on carbohydrates. So what are the carbohydrates? Even they are, they, they are from rice, you cut down your rice. Carbohydrates, you cut down. You reduce the calorie intake. This one is basically rice, okay, bread, whether it's prata, or, uh, and, and then dessert. All the sugary dessert and based on wheat or rice or whatever it is. So you cut down your calorific intake, you remove your junk food, you remove your sugary, you create new varieties of way of life and you'll find that you are healthy. Alhamdulillah, I'm following this method as much as I can and I take a small amount of chicken or meat every day or sometimes I don't take it at all, I go 100% vegetarian and you can understand. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is not a meat eater. People misunderstood, oh, the Prophet ate lamb and ate this meat and that meat. No. For many months, the Prophet never even tasted any meat. For many months in his life. So, very seldom he has this dish of meat, whether it is a lamb or even camel meat, whatever it is. Very, very seldom. So, basically, if we understand the way of life of our Holy Prophet Muhammad he is basically following this lifestyle. So, he is actually... Uh, semi-vegetarian. So we Muslims, yes, we can, we, you, can be, you can opt out to be a full vegetarian if you wish to, but you must know how to go about with it so that you're not, you not deficient in the B-complex and certain uh, oils, all right, like omega-3, but you can opt to become vegetarian. There's no compulsion, but you can be a semi-vegetarian. Uh, I follow the style of GF bombs in my lifestyle as much as I can every day, and I take a small amount of eggs, uh, maybe one, at the most one egg a day, but I make it like GF bomb in my eggs. I add on so many of these things and make it so nutritious, so delicious. And Alhamdulillah, you have a yummy, good life. You have a healthy life. You have a spiritual, emotional, mental and physical well-being. And you can achieve all that by moving away from the toxic 21st century junk food, fast food, sugar food civilization to a new civilization of peace, harmony and success for all in this universe. Thank you.